Hello. In this video, I will show you how to use uh, Markdown and Plant UML to create nice looking uh, entity relationship diagrams from within Visual Studio Code. And in order to accomplish that, the first thing we need to do is to install the Markdown Preview Enhanced plugin within Visual Studio Code. If you have that installed, like I do, you should be presented with this icon whenever you open a Markdown file. Clicking this icon will provide you with a preview of the markdown you're editing on the left, uh, which means if I create a header, entity relationship diagram, uh, it will show up as a header if I enter some text, etc. You know markdown. Within markdown, uh, there is a construct to do syntax highlighting, which is, uh, uses the three um, backticks. And after three backticks, you can uh, specify the language you're typing. So let's say if you're doing type uh, Python, uh, this will, would uh, be syntax highlighted like, uh, like Python would be, both on the left and, and, and on the right. There is a special hack within, um, within Markdown, uh, or at least in this in the implementation of Markdown, that allows you to uh, type plant UML here. And plant UML is not so much a programming language, but it's a, a graphing and diagramming language uh, where you can use text to describe your diagram uh, and it will render into an image, uh, an image that's uh, prettier to look at than just the plain text. Uh, so what will happen is when we create a specify a diagram on the left, it will render and display the diagram on the right. So the first thing we need to do when we're creating an entity relationship diagram, and I'm assuming you already know about ERDs and how they're used, uh, I'm going to show you how to create them uh, from within uh, this plant UML markdown environment. So let's start with a user entity. Uh, it's a pretty classical start. Um, what kind of columns does a user have? Well, maybe something like an email address, uh, a name possibly, a birth date, uh, and who knows what else. These are all columns in SQL. Uh, there's one thing extra we may want to specify, which of these fields are required, uh, which is the opposite of not null in SQL. I'd say in this case, email and name are required fields. And I can show that by adding, uh, prefixing a, an asterisk before these fields. And as you can see on the right, this uh, renders, uh, well, to something that uh, resembles an ERD. That's nice. In order to really show the power of this, we of course need to create links between the relations, uh, between the entities. So, so these are the relationships in the database. So let's create another entity. Let's say car. We want a user to be able to own a couple of cars. Um, what does a car have? I, I don't know, uh, a brand name, I suppose. Uh, if you were actually doing modeling, then probably you would have an entity brand, which we would refer to here. But let's keep it simple for now. A brand name, a model, um, and maybe that's it for now. And then we want to have a relationship between the two. And that's actually pretty easy. We have you, uh, below the entities, we mention the first entity, user. We use two dashes and then car, and that gives us a line between the two. Well, if you know ERDs, a line is not a complete relationship because we don't know um, what it means. Is it a one to many, a many to many? What does this, what does this even mean? Um, and we can specify that by uh, adding arrow hats. Uh, on the user side, I probably want to do a one relationship. So that's the two uh, with two pipes on the left side. And as you can see on the right side, it does render like the type of relationship th that says one. So a car has one owner. Uh, on the opposite side, we want to have uh, a user to have zero or more cars. Um, and we do that by typing in O for the zero and then the accolade opening sign like this. Um, to do the, uh, the, the, the thing uh, becoming broad. So this means zero or many. Um, the nice thing about 
plant UML uh, is that you can make a diagram like this pretty complex and it will automatically lay out all of the entities and the relationships in such a way that relationship lines don't cross each, uh, each other too, too often. It's not perfect, uh, but it's generally good enough and it's really easy to do, especially if you want to make changes later on. Uh, if you were to use some draw program uh, like draw.io online or, or any such uh, such program, um, you would actually end up spending a lot of time on the layout. Um, and when you're doing plant UML, you don't have many options. You just accept the layout as it is, which is probably fine. Um, what I just created is uh, a logical ERD. Let, let's add that in the header, logical. Um, I can, of course, uh, create a physical ERD out of this, which is usually something you do in a later stage. The logical, um, oh, almost, uh, the logical ERD should be something you would be able to discuss with a client, somebody who is non-technical. After a little bit of explanation about relationships, people should be able to follow along and to correct problems in the domain uh, of, of their fields. A physical ERD is more technical. Uh, it's not geared towards a domain expert, but it's geared towards software developers. Uh, and it adds some technical details. Um, the first technical detail we need to add is, of course, uh, what types uh, are all of these columns. So in this case, I'd say email is text. Name is also text. Uh, birth date would be a date. Brand name, text, model, text. Not, a, not as exciting. Uh, but then we need to flesh out the relationships. The relationship uh, is modeled by a line, but when we want to create a physical ERD, we also need to add primary keys and foreign keys uh, in such a way that it corresponds with the line that you see here. So first, let's add IDs for both of our entities. An ID is, of course, required. Uh, it's an integer uh, and it's an identifying field. And that's what in ERDs uh, you can put above the horizontal line. So this is the way to draw this horizontal line. Uh, and the way to interpret it is that this, uh, all of the fields above this together form the primary key. So you can have a composed primary key of multiple fields. And as long as they, together they are unique, then that's fine. That's the primary key. And everything below the line is not part of the, of the primary key. Uh, we do the same thing here. Copy and paste, add a line there. And now we need to put a foreign key from car to user. Because every car has one owner. And that means that a, a user can have uh, multiple cars. Uh, and we can just add it uh, in a way, well, you would su suspect uh, as to add it. Uh, it's every car needs to have an owner, I suppose. Well, maybe not. Uh, it could be an optional field. Uh, and let's call it owner user ID, which is an integer. And then in order to specify that we should use this one as a foreign key, uh, we add F key for foreign key like this. So between double, smaller, and greater than signs. Uh, that's the canonical way to do it in plant Um And that gives us uh, a physical ERD that we just created out of this logical ERD. Um, good luck building your, building your own uh, ERD diagrams. Bye.